Welcome to Titan Upload. The AFC Championship game is right around the corner. And Frank Clark, Frank Clark, man, do you, do smell, you smell what the what king, the is, king cooking. is cooking? And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share. It may be negative 22 degrees out here right now, but I don't care because the Tennessee Titans are one game away from the Super Bowl. So everybody at Titan Upload, let's tighten up. Here we go. So Titans Chiefs, you know, the background, that's the whole Miami thing. I mean, this is it. One win away, we're in the Super Bowl. I mean, that's hard to believe. One win away, <laughs> we're in the Super Bowl. It's just incredible. And no matter what happens, okay, I know it's not easy, easy to lose. Okay, trust me like this. I'm not going in thinking we're going to lose. But I would say is if we do lose – it's been a great season. It has from two and four to where we are possibly having a chance to go to Miami. Uh, those of you that are season ticket holders, we got a email this week basically says they're going to a lottery. I did the math. It looks like each team who's in the Super Bowl gets 17 some percent of the tickets. Therefore, that I, I did the math. I think it holds Miami's um, the Hard Rock Stadium or whatever it's called it holds like 65 some thousand. So that looks like the Titans will get about 11,000 some tickets and those will all be um, lotteried off to the to the Tennessee Titans. So just kind of want to throw that out there to you and, and see. Uh, George, real quick, uh, very confident against the Pats, won 200 bucks. So congratulations, George. That's awesome. So, you know, I, the smallest amount of, for the ticket for the Super Bowl is 950. If you if you if you're a season ticket holder and get it outright through the Titans. Of course, you already know this stuff. You already know this stuff because if you're a season ticket holder, you would already had it, and um, you probably already got the email, so everything's good to go. So here we go. Um, next one. Boom. This is where I'm going off, man. So last week, last week, the Tennessee Titans win at Baltimore, and then all of a sudden, we watch the Texans and the Chiefs. The Texans go up 24 to nothing. I don't know about you, but it totally brought me back to the Rocky movie, Rocky Four. So you watch uh, now Apollo Creed, I, Apollo Creed versus Rocky, great matchup, right? But Apollo Creed, my symbolism here is Apollo Creed was a part of Rocky. Those guys were friends. They practiced to train together. They fought each other. Those are division, division rivals, right? So they got along. Um, the Titans, Texans, AFC South. So we went in to the K or we watched Kansas City 24 to nothing down. It looked like the Texans were going to pound them in the ground. All of a sudden, the Chiefs come out. Chiefs just come out swinging. And honestly, it reminded me of Rocky Four with Drago. I'm not kidding you. And it's like, when's it going to stop? When's it going to stop? When's it going to stop? And they pretty much annihilated the Texans and, and they were done. Like, when they came on the second half, the Texans wanted no part. They were physically beat up, physically, mentally done. Then you bring on the Titans. We're Rocky in this case. We are Rocky going in. The media is behind us. Nobody thinks we can win. Um, everybody's kind of like, I'll give you a stat later on here, uh, what Vegas thinks about us. We're seven and a half point underdogs. Now I think it's seven. You know, like I said, national media across the board. Like there are people that look at us and they don't they don't even want us in the Super Bowl. They're like, we would be a terrible option for for the you know, it would be a terrible game with the Titans. So this is what it reminds me of, you know, like Rocky, Rocky Four going into Russia, for example. Nobody gave him a chance. But I'm telling you what the rumor is, there's going to be a lot of Titan fans. Wouldn't it be amazing if they start chanting, oh, Henry, 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 Henry at Kansas City in the playoffs at Arrowhead? Here's another fun fact for you. I'm not sure if it's a big deal or not, but did you know that this was not really in Russia? Obviously, this was in British Columbia, Canada, where the where the training scene was for Rocky. So how does that play into it? Kansas City is not really in Kansas. It's in Missouri. There we go. Move it on. So the good news, Madden curse. It's got to show up somewhere. Now, one year Brady was in, on the cover of Madden. If you don't know the history with Madden, you go all the way back to when Eddie George was on there. This basically could have destroyed Eddie George's career. Eddie George never was the same back after the Madden curse. So, and it just trickled down, you know, it, it, 
Michael Vick, um, just all the way down the list. Uh, look what it did to Antonio Brown for crying out loud. He was on Madden two years ago. And now we move on. Tom Brady, I mentioned, he threw for 500 yards in the Super Bowl and lost. And then here we go with Mahomes. Now, it already kind of showed up a little bit this year because Mahomes got hurt. And we did beat Mahomes early in the year. Of course, we don't. that doesn't really matter at this point. But when's the Madden curse going to rear its ugly head? That's something to think about. All right, this was my poll question. That's kind of where you are. If you're interested in that, great. If you're not, we'll kind of keep moving on. But you can see... Uh, on the first poll against Baltimore, 22% were, were super confident against the Chiefs. Now we are up to 37%. So those numbers are starting to spike on the top. So that looks like a lot of Titan fans, particular, I'm assuming, um, are starting to really get behind this team, which is great. As far as the matchup goes, I mean, these are the numbers. I mean, these are the regular season numbers. These don't include playoffs. Uh, we went through the Titans last week against Kansas City or Baltimore. But when you look at the offense, I mean, this is – these guys can throw it. Now, when you go back to Lamar Jackson, Lamar was like – he put up a lot and he put up well, over 500 yards, right? He put up a lot of the yards on the ground. I personally think Baltimore gave up way too early. Us going up 14 nothing sh basically shook them. They were not the same team. When they went into that game, Baltimore, I mean, when, when they fall behind 7 nothing, I mean, they're already going for it on fourth down in their own territory. So that's a problem in itself, and that game just kind of escalated. I thought Baltimore had one more chance after half. The, they were driving down the field, you remember? I think they got to our 22-yard line, and then all of a sudden Baltimore decides to go for it yet again instead of kick the field goal and, and trusting that defense. And then, we, and then Henry pops a 66-yard, and, and the game it was basically game-set match. So when you look at these numbers, there's a couple good things. Number one, obviously the rush defense, right? 23rd in the league. Now, Kansas City fans will tell you after they played us, those rush numbers got way better and they were able to shut down the run. However, who did they play besides New England? They played the Chargers twice. They played the Raiders. They played the Broncos. So when you look at those kind of stats and the Bears, for example, um, they didn't play a whole lot of teams that came in running the ball very well. So you know, it is what it is with the numbers. And then you can, you know, you know or I'm sorry, I totally messed that up. 26th against the rush, but offensively 23rd. So you can kind of see the numbers for yourself there. Uh, are, are you going to take a whole lot from there? No. I mean, everything we already know about Kansas City, we know if they're going to beat the Titans, it's going to be through the air and it's going to be Mahomes and it's going to be Kelsey. It's going to be Hill. It's going to be these guys that have beat us, the wide receivers. Um, they're not going to run the ball down our throat. They probably won't even run that much to begin with. So, again, can we limit them? Can we contain them is the big question. Those are the Tennessee Titans stats. I don't want to spend too much time on the Titans right now because these stats are lied, right? Because this is not the true Titan team. The true Titan team is in the playoffs right now. And that defensive, those defensive um, statistics that you see on the right there are a lot better. You know, we've given up 13 points and 12 points in our two playoff games. And our red zone defense, according to Corey Curtis, went from 68% during the year, which ranked us 31 out of 32 teams, to 28%. So 68% to 28%. Our defense is getting it done in the red zone. And that gives me hope for this game. Moving on. Then we look at Derrick Henry. My goodness. Guys, I'm not lying here. You know, I went back in 2016 and I'm like, holy crap. It's like he averaged like I've, I don't even know what that comes out to be. And I'm not really good with math, but he's averaging 7.3 yards per carry against the Chiefs. 2016, which was, again, DeMarco Murray's on the team, all that kind of stuff. Henry, nine carries for 58 yards. Could you imagine if he was the feature back that day and two touchdowns? 2017, the playoff game, 156 total, totally took over. And, and what gives me some confidence here, Titans were down 21-3. to three. Yes, Kelsey got knocked out, but we were down 21-3, to three and we kept running the ball. I know it was a different coaching staff, but that line was pretty much the same other than, you know, the two guards were out of there, but we or the two tackles in the center were the same. And then you see 2019 in Nissan Stadium, 188 yards, 23 carries. You put them all together, 55, 55 carries for 402 yards against the Chiefs alone in three games. That's amazing. So if you're a Kansas City fan, okay, I know some Kansas City fans, they're worried. They're worried. They didn't want to play the Titans. 
Okay. To be fair, I didn't want to play the Chiefs. I would have rather played, and and many many of you guys were, were agreeing with me. You would have rather played the Patriots if you go back to Wild Card Weekend because everything was aligned, and then Miami kind of shaked everything up. But everything was aligned for us to play. Um, obviously, the the Chiefs at Kansas City. It didn't work out that way. We knew we were going to play Baltimore anyways the next round, so we went we went with New England. I would rather have it that way because now we get a showdown versus Kansas City. We really get to see what we were made of. Can we run the ball up there? It's going to be cold, 20 degrees. Uh, they said, what, 18 with the wind chill, maybe even a little bit lower. It's going to drop lower on the night. I know the game's at two, but this should be a realistic possibility for us to go in there and run the ball. Um, let's see. We got a super chat real quick, so I'll stop it for this. Yo, awesome, awesome, Titans and M. Awesome. Thank you so much again for supporting the channel. All right, let's keep this thing going a little bit. So inside the numbers, um, this is this is what I kind of came up with, right? So you really, really break down the numbers and look at this. So is it, does this mean anything? You guys can comment, and I'm gonna I'm almost done here, I promise. So rush rush per game defensively, okay? The Titans are basically getting 25 carries against them a game. The Chiefs are getting 26. What does that mean? It means the games with the Chiefs. For the most part, teams, if they want to run the ball against the Chiefs, they're able to run the ball against the Chiefs. So that gives me, remember last week against Baltimore, you know, everybody was saying, oh, you know, the Titans aren't going to get a chance to run the ball because the the Ravens are going to be blowing them out. According to this stat line, Chiefs ranked 17th in, in carries. So if I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, my goodness, like the Titans should have an opportunity to run the ball 25 plus times with Henry. So that's good news for us. The second thing, yards per rush, the Chiefs are 29th in the league. That's not very good. Now, again, if you buy into stats, what they'll tell you in Kansas City is things have changed since they played us. But look at who they've played. Look at that as well, okay? Um, Real quick, Cameron, shout out, man. Congratulations on the sub. Keep it going. Keep that content coming and keep doing your thing, man. And then the opponent incompletions. This is another one. Um, that I that I find is interesting, right? So the Chiefs come in in completions 14 roughly a game, and they rank fifth in the league. The Titans come in defensively with incompletions at 12th. So that's not too bad. That means that there's going to be some incompletions in this game, and hopefully they're on third down, which could totally change the game. But what happens if you include the playoffs? Titans jump to five. Chiefs jump to two. So... Again, if you want any hope, we can at least contain Mahomes. Maybe that little bit of pressure we've been starting to bring, especially last week, maybe that's starting to show show up a little bit and why we're ranking a little bit higher. Again, the number on the right is playoffs. The number on the left is regular season. Uh, as far as passer rating, this is where things kind of go the other way against us. We know we're going to have trouble against the run or pass. So we rank 18th with passer rating. And then if you look at completions per game, the Titans are really bad, 28th in the league, giving up roughly around 24 completions. Now, if we can keep them, let's not give up the big play, nothing beyond 20 yards, make them go down the field. Now, I went back and watched the Colts game. Now, I know Hill didn't play, but if you go back and watch the Colts, the Colts beat them 19-13. The Colts play that like cover two. It's like the Tampa two. Everything's in front. They make Mahomes dump it off, dump it off, dump it off. Don't be surprised if the Titans come out in something like this to try to limit the down the field. Because guess what? If the Chiefs go down the field and they basically just throw short passes, middle of the field, they're going to run some clock. And if they're running clock and we're running clock, if as long as we're cashing in on touchdowns and our 28% red zone defense steps up, hmm, Maybe the Titans have a better chance than people are saying. So those are definitely going to be very, very important. And hopefully, Vrabel, uh, Dean Pease, even Arthur Smith, these guys have been top-notch during the playoffs. So hopefully these guys will continue to bring it. And I really like Vrabel here. I think Vrabel is going to have some tricks up his sleeve, especially defensively, especially having so much insight on those linebackers. And if Jayon Brown plays, Long has been stepping up. And these guys are quick. Maybe, just maybe, 
a little bit of interesting spin that Mahomes hasn't seen. But again, Mahomes is going to be a tough out. I, I don't think any of you are going to disagree with me there. These are just basic stats I, I got for you. Um, you know, Gordon Eckler combined for 15 receptions against the Chiefs. So they were doing it out of the backfield. So I thought about this for a second. I'm like, can would the Titans surprise the Chiefs this week with, with a flare of Deion Lewis? And then I'm like, nah, probably not. So this would be hard for us to do because Henry's strong suit is not. I mean, he can take a screen to the house. Don't get me wrong. So I bet that's in the books. Um, Marcus Mariota, maybe there's a package with him with some sort of screen package. But you can see the running backs against the Chiefs, at least from the Chargers' point of view, really were going up and down the field on Week 17. And then I went back to earlier in the year, right after they played us, uh, Eckler had like, I forget, like nine catches for 108 yards receiving. So that may be something to at least look at, if we're, especially if it's a tight game, to maybe throw a, a, an occasional screen pass there uh, to really kind of change it up a little bit. Because let's be honest, if they're going to come out and put eight in the box, try to stop Henry, maybe, you know, a little, little bit of, maybe that will help. I don't know. So that, that's an interesting thing to keep an eye on. We know Kelsey's going to be a beast. We know Hill. He has not been healthy all year. He's healthy now, supposedly. And Hill's been talking trash. So not only Hill was talking trash, so was Watkins. Watkins was also talking trash. Watkins basically came out today and said uh, they, they basically looked at the Titans' pass defense. And there's really nothing to worry about. So, Bayard, Vaccaro. I know Vaccaro kind of scares me. If you've seen Vaccaro, he's been tweeting out lately. He's been tweeting at guys and explaining what we're doing on defense. Kenny, man, just focus on the game. Focus on the game, man, because that's not something I want to get into as our guys talking back or talking to media guys. Vaccaro was actually talking to a media guy there. And then we know the Titans. So, again, Ryan Tannehill has not thrown it lately. But you know what? We haven't expected to throw him lately. I mean, who expects Tannehill to throw the ball when Henry's getting 195? So I thought Eddie George made some good comments today about that because there are a lot of people on the Titans saying Tannehill is not having good games. Guys, Tannehill's doing just fine. He's got three touchdowns in two playoff games, and he had two last week to put us up 14 nothing. Don't tell me Tannehill's doing bad, Okay. He's not. He's had one turnover. He's hanging on to the ball pretty well. And don't forget, played the Chiefs early in the year. He actually was on the ball. Like that should have been our ball. Chiefs go and score. That totally changes the game too. And then these are third down. Now these stats kind of scare me because I didn't realize the Chiefs had 45 sacks in the regular season and 16 interceptions. So that's pretty good on their part. They are plus eight. We've played plus ten. And Baltimore, and I think plus 20 in, in New England. So we know we can play with these teams. Third down, oh my goodness, almost 50% third down. That's the Mahomes effect. I don't know what to do about that. So we'll definitely see what you guys think. And then as far as the Titans, they've kind of hovered around that all year, haven't they? I mean, the sacks have been – we did a pretty good performance against the Ravens. Our pass defense was a lot better. Starting to see Casey. Remember, he didn't play in that game earlier in the year. Jayon Brown and Corey Davis didn't play. So that gives me some hope, too. And then these guys have been bringing it during the playoffs. I know we didn't sack Brady, but we really did make make uh, Lamar Jackson think about some things. And I think we sacked him four times and didn't um, Casey have four and a, or two sacks and a strip. So, I mean, the Tennessee Titans defensively has been playing a lot better. And I don't think you can gauge them during just the season, just like I don't think you can gauge them in the beginning of the year when Marcus Mariota was your quarterback. And then Ryan Tannehill has been like nine and three cents. And the media, they do disappoint me because the media refuses to acknowledge that this Tennessee Titan team, when we played Kansas City, had a lot of guys out. And they want to talk about Kansas City having some guys out, but it's like nobody wants to mention who was out. And and I'll be honest with you, I thought Casey would get way more love this week. And I, I'm not seeing a whole lot of love for Casey. Um, I know you guys love him. I love him. And he's been, I mean, he's always been a good player for us, but he never gets any national attention because he plays for the Titans, of course. But uh, this week I thought, man, he was going to shine, but not getting a whole lot of love. Of course, Deion Sanders is not going to pick against us, supposedly. So take that for what it's worth. I think we all know Chris Jones is the big guy, okay? Um, I apologize. It's taking forever. Uh, I'm almost wrapping up here, and then we'll get to your comments and dive more into the game. So I appreciate you guys being here. But Humphreys, is he going to play? I don't know. You guys can comment if, if what you think about him. 
He's been limited both times. I think I think he'll play in the Super Bowl. Now I have way more confidence he'll play in the Super Bowl. I just don't think he'll play this week. That's just me. Because and the reason why I say that is he's missed so much and he's come back in a limited fashion. I think if he would have been ready to go, they would have brought him back last week limited, and then he would have played this week. So I still think he's about a week or two off, but it looks like he'll at least go for the Super Bowl. And guess what? If he does play this week, we could use him, right? Jayon Brown, he looked, he's limited to two, but he's different because Jayon Brown actually has been playing all year, got her roughed up in the playoff game against the Patriots, missed last week. But, I mean, he was running around in those videos today, so... You know what I mean? They were, they were, looked like they were relaxed. They were having a good time. The receivers were dancing it up. So it looks like they're loose. Um, like I said, it's going to be cold. So who knows? But I, I'm confident in long. So I wonder how you guys feel about long as well. And then these are my keys. And then we'll get into your keys. You know, I don't, I feel like the number one key is don't fall behind. Like just hang in there, you know, 10 to 7, 14, 7, even 10 points, I think is okay. We've proven we come back, but. I don't want to go down that road again. It'd be nice to get out on top. Now, it would be interesting. Would you want the ball first or do you want them to get the ball first? I really like getting the ball in the second half and then being able to score like they were talking about what the Patriots love to do, score at the end of the half and then come back and score again. But if we give the ball to the Chiefs, and keep in mind, too, the Chiefs were so bad in the first quarter. It like took them forever to get going maybe you do kick the ball off to them because if we go three and out and they go right down the field, at least if they score right away, you know, it's still early enough where if you can run the ball, you can still run the ball. You know what I mean? And you know, you can chew the clock score, maybe come up with a few stops and then you're getting the ball in the second half. So I would honestly rather take it in the second half. So that's definitely something uh, we'll see what happens. Henry get at least 25 carries. We already shared earlier that the chiefs, giving up around 26 carries a game. So it looks like Henry will at least get his carries. Um, and who knows? He, I, I thought he looked a little bit – he was slowing down a little bit in that game against the Ravens. But the, but the guy has just been tearing it up with the carries. 34 against Houston, 32 against New England, 30 last week or something like that. It's just insane. So it does. he wasn't on the injury report. So my guess is he's good to go, and we're sure going to need him for sure. And that offensive line is playing lights out. So I want to give a credit to Keith Carter, the offensive line coach. We've been on him all season. And then to give a credit to, obviously, all the offensive linemen. Um, win the turnover battle. You know, I don't care how you do it. Just win it. Don't lose it for sure. No big plays. Like I mentioned, the Colts, they did the nice little cover. Tampa 2 against them. Held them to 13 points. I know Hill didn't play. I know Mahomes wasn't the same guy back then. He was a little banged up. And then Vrabel, I think, can out-coach Andy Reid. So that's a big indicator. Andy Reid coming in this game is like one and eight against the Titans. And let's be honest, other than the last couple of years, the Titans haven't really been that all amazing. So that is a really mind blowing stat that we still, I remember going there in opening day, Wiz and Hunt, right? Was his debut with Locker and we went in there and beat him up. And then the next week we got beat by Dallas and it was over. So the Titans always surprise uh, going into Kansas City. So let's hope that trend continues. So we're getting the game predictions, and then I want to I want to go here, and then we'll have it all to you guys. So this is what really fired me up. Okay, I gotta like calm down because I'm gonna lose it again. So we are one game away from the Super Bowl. I don't know why these come out right now. I don't know why they don't wait. You know, another couple of weeks. But so these Super Bowl odds came out. It's not a misprint. It's not a misprint. I wish it was. It's not. Now, I don't. This would be perfect for us because we know how good this team is. So if you want to make some money, I guess this is a good chance to make some money. The Titans and the Jaguars. I mean, we're all the way down with the Titans and Jaguars. This does concern me. The reason why it concerns me is I know that we got Henry and Tannehill and we're unsure about that. We know we're bringing those, those guys back. I don't think there's any doubt. But New England. 12 to 1 with Brady's future? I think that's way more in doubt than our future. You know, I even think the Bills got a little taken here, 40 to 1. And then the Browns, 33 and 1. Here we go again. And why bring this up and we'll move on? The Bears and the Falcons, Cowboys with a new coach. 
Steelers were a mess at the end of the year. I know Big Ben's coming back, but the Chiefs, the Ravens, the 49ers are seeming to be the big powerhouse teams. We just beat the Ravens and crushed them. And now we're 50 to one for next year. So what does it all mean? It might mean, um, even though we made the FC championship game, if you remember the Jaguars after they made the championship game and should have beat the Patriots, Jaguars got one Sunday night game, just one. And I don't think they got any Monday night games. And the Jaguars got flexed out of that game against the Steelers. Please tell me that's not going to happen to the Titans. So just wanted to see what you, how you comment towards that because I found that super insulting. I almost wanted to vomit. I was like, what the heck is this? And Chargers don't even know they don't even know who their quarterback's gonna be, and they're 25 to one. So just wanted to throw that out there. But uh 